Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Huron. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to celebrate today a great initiative undertaken by One Laptop Per Child Canada, also known as OLPC Canada, in partnership with the Sogging First Nation Library and Sogging First Nation Youth. Last Friday, hosted by April in the Aaron Root Memorial Youth Centre in Southampton, OLPC Canada donated five computers and recording equipment to the library to be used by 10 young people in their community to enhance their computer literacy skills. As part of the program, the students developed a podcast, a variety of podcasts to be specific, called the Indigenous Exchange, to focus their learning as well as discuss culturally relative subjects such as language, art, culture, and traditional foods. The Ontario Trillium Foundation has also contributed to the initiative with a grant allocated over three months. The project is anticipated to positively benefit 40 people in the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation community and is a great way to get young people engaged with their elders. In being with the young people on Friday night, they were very proud of their work. We took time to have each of them show us our podcast. And Based on their excitement of their podcasts, their pride, and the pictures that showed them in action developing their podcasts, I could tell there was a significant return on investment in this particular instance, and it underscores the importance of young people being connected and appreciating their cultural traditions. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. Members' statements. The member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, last week the Ontario Health Coalition posted this urgent action alert regarding Bill 160. It was entitled "New Bill Allows Private for Profit Hospitals and More Private for Profit Clinics." It says the Liberal government is moving forward with legislation that lifts the ban on private hospitals, rolls private hospitals in with private clinics, and renames them offensively community health facilities and makes it easier for private hospitals and clinics to expand and more difficult for the minister to stop them. This legislation was brought in with no prior public consultation. It is a massive omnibus bill that repeals or enacts seven entire acts and amends more than 30 acts. The OHC was given five minutes to present to the Standing Committee on this massive piece of legislation. Without due consideration of the consequences, the government is making a grave mistake that could easily usher in very significant new privatization and threats to our local public hospitals. Speaker, the NDP opposes this next phase of liberal privatization initiatives. We asked questions about it in the legislature this morning, and we will continue to oppose the liberal privatization agenda in health, hydro, transportation, and education. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Ancaster, Dundas, Flamborough, and Westdale. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I, I want to talk a little bit uh, today about uh, the greatest privilege uh, that I've had in my uh, 17 and a half years as an MPP. Uh, that uh, privilege, Mr. Speaker, has been to meet uh, uh, four or five times a year with a post-secondary advisory committee made up of students from Mohawk College, Redeemer University College, and McMaster University. The student presidents and other key student leaders uh, meet, and, uh, and we talk, and we uh, have different ministers come in to uh, uh, elaborate on uh, what's happening here, here in the Legislative Assembly and with various policy areas. I benefited enormously, uh, Mr. Speaker, from listening to students. I want to assure the House that uh, we as a, a province and as a nation are in very good shape given the quality of the students that uh, I encounter every day. I try to spend them at least one day a month, a uh, full day a month on, on campuses, and uh, it's helpful. Uh, we talk about uh, OSAP. Uh, there was a, a time when Redeemer students weren't eligible, and we fought that fight and got that changed, as well as some uh, credits for field placement uh, folk that weren't there. We talk a lot about quality education, and of weight, We've been speaking a fair bit about mental health. In fact, we have a couple of representatives from each uh, institution that are now working with me and the administration of their institutions to develop and hopefully implement uh, a mental health strategy for post-secondary students. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> for the member's statement, the member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to pay tribute to Orville Hammond of Bracebridge, a community, community leader and born entrepreneur who passed away on Remembrance Day at age 88. Orb entered the transportation business in 1944 when, it, when his principal told him to quit school and go to work. With a special permit to drive, Orb took up driving a taxi and a year later bought his own car and started a taxi business. By the 60s, when Mr. Hammond was my school bus driver, he had expanded Hammond's taxi into student transportation. Mr. Hammond was also my first driving instru instructor, teaching me to shift gears as he drove the bus when I was very young. And I wasn't the only one. At his funeral, his children and grandchildren all talked about how he taught them to drive. Ham Hammond Transportation is now run by Orb's son, Greg, has a fleet of more than 175 school buses and coaches and employs 300 people. When you drive into Bracebridge on Highway 118, you can't miss the Hammond Transportation Yard. Orb Hammond helped to build Bracebridge. He was gener a generous donor to the school breakfast programs, food banks, and children's sports teams. He and his wife, Fran, raised a wonderful family, Jim, Brad, Greg, and Beverly. I want to share today my condolences with the extended Hammond family and let them know how well loved and respected Orb Hammond was. Orb Hammond was one of a kind and he will be missed by many. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the member's statement. The member from London West. Thank you, Speaker. On August 1, 2013, Alyssa Kilburn's son, Jeremy Bowley, dropped her off at work in London before heading to his summer job. She had no idea that this was the last time she would see him alive. At the age of 21, Jeremy died when a tent pole at his work struck an overhanging power wire. A Ministry of Labour investigation later found that none of the six workers on the crew, all 25 years of age or younger, had received safety training, and no one from the company had assessed the site in advance. Alyssa's journey since that day has been remarkable. In the face of unimaginable grief, she became involved with Threads of Life and is a strong advocate for workplace safety. She has also been closely involved with the coroner's inquest jury into Jeremy's death, which last week released recommendations to prevent more young workers from dying on the job. These include new high school curriculum on occupational health and safety and the rights of students to refuse unsafe work. Speaker, with the expansion of experiential learning across all Ontario schools, colleges and universities, occupational health and safety training for students has never been more critical. I call on this Liberal government to immediately adopt all of the coroner's inquest jury recommendations and especially mandatory workplace safety training for young people in Ontario. This is the least we can do for Alyssa Kilborn and every parent like her who has lost a child to workplace Death. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The member statements. The member from Ottawa South. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I rise today uh, to recognize and celebrate physician assistants in Ontario. November 27th was National Phys Physician Assistant Day in Canada. Working alongside physicians and other health professionals, Canada's PAs are having a positive impact on the quality of care that Canadians are receiving. National PA Day is about public education and awareness of the profession, as well as celebrating those medical professionals and thanking them for the work that they do. We recognize the significant impact that physician assistants have on internal medicine, acute care, primary care, and other areas of our health care system. Speaker, my mother was a nurse at National Defence Medical Centre for many years, and she worked with many medics, and I know there are many physicians that come from our Canadian Armed Forces, and I want to give a shout out to them as well. Physician assistants also play a critical role in maintaining a strong and sustainable health care system. I'd like to thank PAs for their dedication and commitment to patient care in Ontario. I'd also like to recognize the Canadian Association of Physician Assistants, CAPA, for their advocacy work and commitment towards physician assistants across Ontario and the country. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. It is my pleasure to stand here today and recognize Mr. John Lalonde of Sault Ste. Marie, the Canadian Bush Plain Heritage Centre, and uh, their incredible team of volunteers. In 1997, Mr. Lalonde and several other volunteers undertook to rebuild a de Havilland Fox Moth aircraft. Twenty years later, they can proudly say they've completed the task that they had set out to do. The de Havilland Fox Moth was invented in 1932 in the United Kingdom. After the Second World War, 53 of these units were built in Canada, 
and 39 of them remained in Canada after production. Most of these were flown in uh, flow ski configuration and they were used as bush planes. The aircraft was originally designed as a compact, economical passenger aircraft with space for three passengers uh, behind the engine and the pilot seat was just outside uh, near the aft of the plane. The company also designed a special gurney so that this aircraft could be used uh, to, uh, to, uh, as an air ambulance in times of need. The wings of the plane would actually fold in for easy storage. Bush planes are an essential component of Canadian history, and the Canadian Bush Plane Heritage Centre in Sault Ste. Marie recognizes the monumental contribution that bush planes have made, and their mandate is to foster awareness and appreciation of that. This astonishing piece of history was recreated by hand with countless hours invested by these volunteers who are simply committed to preserving Canadian heritage. The fruit of their labour is a tangible piece of Canadian history that will provide the next generation of Canadians with a first-hand link to the past. The team that dedicated themselves to this project hope that they can receive approval to have this plane flown on a special occasion by pilot Dave Hatfield, who is the brother of Canadian astronaut Chris Hatfield. I want to share how proud I am of this team and their dedication to our history. I commend them for their 20-year commitment to this extraordinary project and for once again putting Sault Ste. Marie on the map. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from uh, Scarborough, Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. One of the great privileges of serving as an MPP is meeting talented constituents of Scarborough, Agent Court. It is my honour to rise today, Mr. Speaker, to recognize exceptional work of Robert McComan, a paramedic superintendent with Northumberland County. This year, Robert McComan was awarded the Governor General's Emergency Medical Service Exemplary Service Medal. This medal recognizes Robert's professionalism, emergency medical services to the public, and the performance of these duties in an exemplary manner, characterized by good conduct, industry, and efficiency. Robert is entering his 38th year of what he calls, quote, a long career of rendering aid to the sick and injured, end of quote. He cites working with other paramedics and healthcare partners as truly a rewarding experience. Robert's service to his community includes being a champion paramedic education, both as a student and as an educator. He previously worked with the Toronto Paramedic Service as a driver educator. This important role enables Roberts to train new paramedics on road and speed safety to keep Ontarians safe. Robert believes in lifelong education, and this is demonstrated by his recent completion of a Loyalist College program of managing and leading in municipal environment. Robert Coleman, on behalf of the Ontario Legislature, I would like to thank you for your long and exemplary service as paramedic and driver educator for the past 38 years. Again, congratulations on your recent Governor General Emergency Medical Service Exemplary Service Medal. So thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from York Simcoe. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and it's my pleasure to be able to talk today about. Um, the uh, amazing uh, Miriam King in Bradford. Yesterday I learned with great sadness that two local papers in my riding are closing, they're closing their doors, the Bradford Times and the Innisfil Examiner. We all know that the way people consume media is changing, and one consequence of that includes a decline in print advertising revenue. Yesterday, the citizens of Bradford, West Willembury, and Innisfil lost a huge supporter of our community life. Miriam King was that supporter. Her enthusiasm for our communities was legendary. She managed to get from one event to another, sometimes 12 to 15 in one day. We will miss her dedication. Sadly, it is not only my community that is impacted by these changes. Community newspapers across Ontario are being closed, including Aurelius Packet and Times and the Berry Examiner, which has operated since 1864. My thoughts today are with the nearly 300 people across Ontario who are losing their jobs as a result of very real human impact. In particular, my thoughts are with my friend, Miriam King, the editor of the Bradford Times. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's therefore time for reports by committees.